not yet great. Hello? Test? That test good? We good? All right. Good morning for all those on Central Time today. My name is Greg Davis, and I'd like to welcome you to our CBS ArcSafe presentation on remote switching for molded case circuit breakers. You know, with all the stuff going on out there today, we wish you, your families, your coworkers, you know, work to take the appropriate safety measures with your basic hand washing and PPE, face masks, and uh, Try and keep everybody safe and healthy at home. Now let's go ahead and move on to our presentation and the actual products we're going to be talking about. Molded case circuit breakers come in a variety of designs. These have been manufactured since the 1930s, 1940s, all the way up to today. We don't have anything from probably pre-1960 that we're going to play with uh, in our presentation today, just to let somebody know. We have stuff manufactured by Square D, things manufactured by Westinghouse things manufactured by Cutler Hammer, Eaton Cutler Hammer, Westinghouse, okay? We've got circuit breakers that we don't have that we can't do just because of the, the amount of time we have and the preparation and everything required, but we have stuff from Siemens. We've got stuff from ABB. And one of the things you're gonna notice is everything is shaped a little bit different. So if somebody says, why can't I have one remote switch actuator to do everything? It's because everything has a different shape, a different range of motion, different geometry. And those are things that we have to take into consideration when we design a remote switch actuator. One of our most popular ones that we've used for several years now is the first one we're gonna start with here, which is our RSA 57V for the square D P frames. You're gonna notice that it's actually got a stop on here. So if we had to actually move it to do a reset of the circuit breaker, we had to actually move our stop out of the way. Anytime you use a remote switch actuator for a circuit breaker, you want to make sure that it's also set to the position that the circuit breaker's in before you put it on the circuit breaker. So this one's in the closed position. So we can verify that this is going to match up with our switch. And then we can place it on here. Get that handle in there, right there. And we'll turn on our two high strength magnets right here. Now, one of the things to note about the magnets, I'm going to show you something real quick so everybody understands. The magnets are great at holding things in place, but a magnet can slide on a metal surface. Okay, I can move this around. So its holding force is going this way, but it doesn't do that good just holding something in place if it's going to be rotating or sliding up and down. So what you're going to see as we go through this, you're going to see what are called locators on the various actuators. And those help keep everything positioned to resist the twisting, like up here and down here, or moving up and down. We'll look at the faces we get over here to our SPCB. Now, all of these actuators that deal with a simple open, close, or on, off can use just one control box, our RSO1AR, which we have right here to perform that operation. So you're gonna see this used on all the actuators that we're gonna to use today. This one control box can actually control over 300 actuators that we have. So whether you've got a medium voltage motor control center like a GE limit amp, which is a future subject, whether you've got a knife blade switch whether you've got a motor control center, whether you've got a molded case circuit breaker, that one control box fits all those applications. So we'll turn our remote switch on and we're gonna use our radio remote today that we've got with this one. We've got green coming up, so we've got a good radio link. And so we're in the closed position right now, so we wanna trip this. We're gonna simply hold down the trip button for the travel. And now we've performed it. You would remove the actuator. You'd go through your logout, lockout tagout routine at this point and secure the equipment that's downstream for getting your work done. Uh, we've seen P-frame breakers like this in uh, data centers. We've seen them in chemical processing facilities. They've been around for quite a while. So there's lots of applications for this. 
many times you will find something like this old Westinghouse breaker here to be a possible main on a motor control center. Uh, I've seen many of these in the Middle East and I actually domestically also. And here's what I'm talking about. Here is the locator that's going to resist the movement of the actuator going up and down as we operate this thing. Some of the safety items I'll note is whenever you have a circuit breaker trip, if it's tripped, do your troubleshooting. Turn off the stuff that's downstream. Follow the sounded guys. I actually know of a case where there was a fatality because somebody didn't do the downstream shooting and tried to turn something big like this back on right away without turning everything off downstream. And that's, you know, that's a tragedy that can easily be avoided in the workplace. You don't have to just turn everything right back on right now. Do sound work. Okay. So we're in the trip position now. So we're going to, or the trip or open position. So now we're going to close. And you'll notice that I have to hold the button down for the entire duration of travel. You're moving an actuator through throughout that range to have this operate, okay? With the radio remote option, we can control this from up to 100 meters away. If we're just using the pendant cable on the box, we're going to be about 30 to 35 feet away with that length of cable. Now, with each one of these, we actually do have manuals. So for the RSA 57V, you can see it's got a picture of the circuit breaker on the front. Can you see that well, Brian? Okay. For the RSA 20F, we open it up and we'd see that we've got the right actuator for the right breaker here. And our next circuit breaker is the Eaton Cutler Hammer R-Frame. Now, one of the funny things I'm going to show you here is we're going to use the standard R-Frame, RSA 113G here. We've actually developed a variant of this for people who have these on wind farms where it's on the low side of a transformer and you have to be able to quick mount. So where to you look closely at this manual, you're gonna see a quick mount bracket that goes on the top and the bottom of the circuit breaker. And you simply buy the mounting brackets for each one of those and you're able to move the RSA from R-frame to R-frame and quickly mount it and operate it. So we work to take into account what you have to deal with out there in the field when you operate these. Also, um, sometimes you may have curt keys. You may have handle extensions. Some of these require the handle extension to be on, and some require you to remove it, okay? So we work to specify with the manual which way the breaker needs to be configured to be able to operate it. Here's our RSA 113G, okay? And we work to, this one's going to actually have the handle on it when we operate it. So unlike the smaller one, the other one, the older one right there next to it. So this is going to pop right on here. We turn on our two magnets. We'll connect our actuator. The breaker is in the trip position. So this one we're going to close. I've seen a lot of these in motor control centers, either as a main. I've seen them used in hotels as a main on a panel board. So now we're going to close this one. And then let's say that the breaker tripped internally. And then could we go back to a reset position? Or if you want to reset the breaker because it's tripped, you actually have to come all the way down to the complete open position to be able to reset the breaker. And then we would be able to close from there. And then we would be able to reclose from there. But again, if you've had a circuit breaker trip, do your troubleshooting. Figure out why it tripped. Don't just want to turn it right back on right away. Maybe talk about adjustability. So say it, it wasn't able to close um, and the adjustments that could be made to. There are adjustments that we have. They are detailed in the manuals. If there is a small variation in the way your uh, actuators are mounted and we work to help you solve uh, any troubleshooting problems you may have with this. The sales team, we have 24 hour support, 365 days a year. 
to make sure that we get you taken care of. Uh, I myself use WhatsApp with customers around the world, but we've got info at cbsarcsafe.com. Plus we've got our local sales rep and you've got inside sales rep people that you can contact to work to get your support issues taken care of if you need to make any adjustments on the way this is fitting. The next breakers that we're gonna work on are a square D set over here on a power R zone, uh, what we refer to, uh, refer to as an eye line panel. Now, one of the things that's really good about this uh, panel for you is you can tell when you look at this, I'll wait for Brian to finish, okay. So you've got circuit breakers that are recess mounted almost an inch and a half up here. You've got others which have a trip unit on it. You've got one that looks like it's flush mounted, another one that's recessed mounted. So because we have to work with the geometry of the circuit breaker and how it's mounted, we have a variety of designs of RSAs. So these are things that when, when you send us pictures and you send us a nameplate, also think about sending us a couple of pictures, okay? I liken it to family portraits. If all you show me is the face, I can't necessarily see the data that I need. If you think about it as this is your family and I want to see a picture of the family, show me the picture of the whole board, then show me a picture of the circuit breaker itself, and then show me a picture of the data plate. So normally I will tend to ask customers for about three pictures so that we can get a good idea of what you have to deal with when you're doing this. So you're going to notice here that the shape of this is different than this. And so you're going, okay, hey, those have different mounting dimensions and other stuff, and that's why you can't just use, again, one actuator for everything. This is the RSA 164J, and it's for the square D P frames right here. And we simply mount it like this. And it locates around the face of the breaker to resist the movement back and forth. We'll hook up our RSO1 here. And again, we're in the tripped position, so we want to go to the close. You'll notice in that operation, we have enough distance in the throat here where it's moving that the breaker, when it closes, it actually springs forward or when it trips, it flies past. And that's just so that the breaker is allowed to function normally when it reaches that point in the operation to be able to do that. All right. Let's see, this is the 57G, and this goes. This is the RSA 57G, and it's for the square D uh, L frames. Now, normally, we would locate on the raised housing, but we can't here. Why is that? The reason we can't locate on the raised housing, which is would normally be in this area, is because this breaker is recessed about a half an inch in terms of its mounting. So we have to use the actual sides of the frame itself, the, the, the switch gear, to resist the movement going back and forth on this one. So this, this switch looks similar to the L, A, L, H, L, Y. It, there, it, there's L, A, L, H, L, Y, and uh, others that are in there, but the mounting uh, determines how we have to build the RSA to be able to operate the, the circuit breaker. So this one is in the open position, so we're going to close it. And that's how that one sets up to operate. Can you guys show the underside there? Of yes, how exactly I will. I will. Let me take this one off and off. Ben was asking the question, how does this locate? 
And you're going to see that this actually spans this gap. And it goes flush to the face of the circuit breaker so that we know the depth that this needs to go and how far off the face of the circuit breaker we can make the throat so the RSA operates properly. Now, a couple of things I'm just going to bring up before we get our last couple circuit breakers done is when is a molded case circuit breaker not a molded case circuit breaker? And this is going to be one of our future presentations. And that's when it's actually mounted behind a door. And you have a long stick on it. And when you close the door, you put a handle on the front of it. Okay, that's a motor control center, a motor control center handle operator, and they come in various shapes and sizes. We want to know when you send us pictures what it is you put your hands on so that we can quote the proper actuator. We've had people send us pictures of a door open on a motor control center with a long aluminum shaft sticking out going, I have a Westinghouse such and such frame here. What do I need? And we say, please close the door and send us a picture of the handle you put your hands on to operate the circuit breaker. And they're like, oh, that's this one. It's a Westinghouse Type W motor control center. So those come in three different sizes, and then we work to help you figure out which ones of the sizes you have for those. The other thing is you can encounter a circuit breaker like this, and this is actually the smallest charge closed trip mechanism to date that we have made. This is for a Square D Schneider Merlin Gurren compact NF circuit breaker. I'll just bring it here a little bit closer so you guys can see. And we made this for one of our customers in the Middle East, and it'll actually charge, close, and trip the circuit breaker and fit on it. I posted a picture of the remote switch actuator and the circuit breaker yesterday, both on our Facebook and our LinkedIn pages. ABB makes a similar type of mechanism. They come in a couple sizes. Schneider makes one for this size, and they make a bigger one for the next size up frames. Uh, General Electric, Eaton, Siemens, they all have similar ones too. So we want to know what you put your hands on. We want to see a picture of it. So if you have something like that, we can work to possibly make an actuator to fit those needs. The last two actuators we're going to do today, one is going to be here for the, square, the, the GE. Uh, it's going to be the SG in the Spectre series circuit breakers. And we'll put our simple faceplate on here so that we've got a place for the magnets to attach and mount. And you're going to see this is how this is what going to mount around the little pit of the face that's on the circuit breaker itself. Okay. The interesting thing about this is sometimes people will try and put on an actuator possibly upside down. Always look at the picture if you have any questions so that you know that you're mounting this in the right direction. Okay. This little cutout tab right here is for your trip button that's on the face. So that's why that's there. Yes, yes, I can. So I'll turn this sideways now and actually tell you what, since this one's small enough, I don't know if you can actually zoom down in there, Brian, and I'll operate it with it down here. Okay, so we've got the circuit breaker in the closed position, so now we're just going to trip it. And now we're going to close it. And that's what it takes to operate the little RSA 113 or the little RSA um, 72B. Greg, what kind of ranges of molded case breakers have we done? done the largest things we've done are the, the, Ben just asked the question, what are the ranges of circuit breaker size? The largest molded case circuit breakers we're going to run into are the old Westinghouse SPCBs that are 3,000 amps. We've done also all the way down to single pole breakers that go in a standard panel board. So we've done single pole, double pole, triple pole, triple throw, uh, low voltage breakers that are like on the 220 volt range in a panel board. We've done 
uh, if we would traditionally call this the I line of uh, circuit breakers for square D. So these, and then uh, the, th the thing is, we work to identify what it is you send us to help you figure out what you have and what we can do to help you out. So I think the smallest breaker we've done something for is actually around 60 to, to 50 amps uh, that I can think of off the top of my head for somebody requiring something. Uh, we've actually quoted stuff all the way down to about 20 amps in a panel board for, for some companies that wanted to make sure they, if they needed something, that we could do something for them. So we work to review the panel board type, the clearance dimensions, and then uh, proceed to figure out if we can build something for something very small also. Um, things to note, it is important to give us the proper data, especially as manufacturers work to update designs and things. So uh, Eaton's come out with a new line of moldy case circuit breakers. ABB's had the T-Max series out there for several years, and they came out with the T, uh, TU Max, so they've got a variation on it, and those have actually a slight change in the shape and the size of the face. So it's important to know what it is you're dealing with for us to be able to quote the proper um, actuator. The handle size also changed when ABB went to their new TU Max breakers. So this is the last one. This is the Westinghouse Cutler Hammer um, Series C. This was the uh, end frame. And um, commonly used as a main on a lot of motor control. It is commonly used as a main on a lot of motor control centers. Uh, this one's a 1200 amp breaker. So um, you'd find these in things like pipeline stations where uh, you're dealing with uh, a lot of motor control centers. And usually if you've got this, then you've got like a Westinghouse uh, 2100 or a, a Freedom 5 Star Advantage series. You could have something newer like a um, FlashGuard MCC, and we've done some for the IT series of Eaton and the, um, the FlashGuard also. So those come in different handle shapes also. This is one that you have to have the handle extension on again to operate. So a lot of the times you'll see a, a large uh, Kirk key. Right hand side or yes, this this sometimes will have the uh, Kirk key on it, and so you would have to work to and just here's here's the uh, the mounting bracket in terms of what it is that we're going to use to keep this aligned on the circuit breaker as it goes on there. So you'll see Kirk keys, you'll see a lockout tag out on these, and so we'll work to make sure the customer gets us that information so that we can properly. Um, tell them what it is that we can do and quote the proper RSA for that. All right, we are in the open position. And so I'm just gonna hold the faceplate here in place and I'm gonna go close. Trip. And so that's how the systems are designed. They're made to uh, be able to set up fairly easy with just a couple minutes and get everything operated. Remember, you don't have a 10 foot or a, a 10 meter or 30 foot cord, so you stand right in front of this panel board. If it's got an arc flash sticker on it that says, I need to be 25 feet away, take the control box that far away. Don't just stay there. You are supposed to work to use this equipment outside the arc flash hazard boundary. So know that distance and walk it off and stay safe. Do we have any other questions? Um, you may want to touch on, you know, uh, circuit breaker enclosures that have an external, um, externally mounted handle operator. Okay. Um, Sometimes you will find, uh, as we said, motor control centers, or you may have a, uh, a handle operator that is on the outside. So... Again, send us the pictures of that. Sometimes you may have something like a Pringle switch or a bolted pressure switch. We do have solutions for those also, and we can work to address those in a future presentation. So we don't want you to feel like you're alone or that somebody isn't working to try and help you solve this issue or that we don't already have a solution for it. We've got over almost 800 products, I think, up to date that we've designed and developed for somebody like you around the world who's needed something like this to keep you and your people safe. Any other questions? Just, yeah, I did ask just 
general questions? Any general questions? Yep. And one more time, uh, if you've got questions, please email us at info at cbsarcsafe.com or 1-877-382-4411. Uh, you can find us on the web and, you know, please send us your pictures, ask us the questions, and we'll work to get our appropriate sales rep in touch with you to help you identify the proper solution that you need for our clash mitigation. Uh, so Joshua McLean asks, where would you recommend the use of uh, charge clothes or the or the permanent mount versus the portable? So maybe. OK, just to discuss, somebody's asked uh, Joshua asked a question about permanent mount and portable mount remote switch actuators. And we've actually done some permanent mount actuators that for some facilities that are required to be able to operate the actuators from the control room and not just use an RSO. And the number of times we've done that is I think under 10, but we have that capability. If you need it, we can work with your facility engineers to deliver the control capability to the control room to be able to operate this and leave a remote switch actuator actually permanently mounted on the switch for you to be able to operate it in that fashion. May, may talk about maybe stainless steel. Oh, other things to discuss are also if you have something mounted in stainless steel or in an aluminum enclosure, we use what are called mounting lugs, which we send a template with. And there's one set of lugs that'll come with the actuator for you to be able to put the actuator on that switch, lock it in place with a couple of set pins, and then be able to operate the actuator. So those are special case scenarios uh, we've dealt with. Uh, stainless steel um, safety switches. We've done with stainless steel molded case circuit breaker enclosures. Uh, so help us to know what it is you're dealing with and we'll work to get you taken care of. Any other questions? We'll give it another minute here. Okay. And again, uh, is our next presentation going to be motor control centers? Yes. Okay. Our next presentation will be on motor control centers. So you'll see a whole bunch of handles like this that are going to be in front of doors where you've got molded case circuit breakers and other things behind them. And we make a lot of different handles for a lot of different customers. There are actuators that will fit these things. So may touch base about um, subscribing to our channel and hitting the notification button. So they also, can you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can look us up on YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook. Uh, we do have uh, channels there for you to go view several of our product videos that we do have online. If you don't see something and you need something, please email us at info at cbsarcsafe.com and we'll work to find out what it is you're facing and figure out whether or not we've already addressed that for another customer. I'd like to say thank you again, and have a safe day out there.